Bij de binnenkomst van de koningin hebben we haar een bloemetje overhandigd. En hier hebben we een demo gedaan waarbij we Maxima's gezicht geleerd hebben, een bestelling opgenomen hebben. En Amigo is een drankje voor haar gaan halen. En bij terugkomst is hij haar nog goed te herkennen, gelukkig. Gewoon, gewoon heel leuk om te, te weten hoe dat die robots nu eh, nou echt werken en eh, hoe dat ze bijvoorbeeld met elkaar samenwerken. Dus, uh, dat, vraag, en, uh, dat hebben we een beetje proberen uit te leggen. So there we are again. Um, uh, Jurgen could not be here today, so uh, we invited a uh, guest, and this is uh, Jonathan from Canada from the small size league team, Thunderbots, right? Yes, from Thunderbots, thank you. And what's the university called? Uh, we're with the uh, University of British Columbia from Vancouver, okay. Canada. Oh, I see, good. So small size league, um, we've, we've mainly been covering the mid-size league, so the, the, the big wagons. And you have smaller cars, they, they're about 20 centimeters high, something like that? Um, the robots are uh, 15 centimeters high by 18 centimeters in diameter, um, and they have to move really fast yes. so it's all about strategy that's why it's my favorite league it's the it's the it's the fastest game on the on the robocup i think i think so yeah yeah um, the robots move a few meters per second but the ball can travel up to uh, 8 meters per second oh okay and the difference with the mid-size league is of course that they're all controlled by one central computer and this central computer has a vision a top view of the field uh, yeah, there are two cameras located um, overhead the field, which monitor what's going on. Uh, that then sends the data over the network to the two opposing teams. They look at that information, calculate a strategy, and deploy their robots to do battle on the field of soccer. <laughs> Excellent. So good. We, uh, we have been filming uh, one of the games of today. Now, I was told by the people in the Small Size League that the really good teams are still in separate groups and they, they're not really playing against each other. So that we have to wait until tomorrow until the top teams will compete directly against each other. Uh, so what happens at the beginning of the, of the uh, RoboCup is the top tier teams from last year, the best teams, are seated across the fields. Um, this is to ensure that a good team doesn't get kicked out of the competition too early. Yeah. So. We have been uh, taping one of the games. It's uh, Scuba, and Scuba is the team to watch. I was told it's one of the one of the best teams at the moment. Uh, they've placed first a few years in a row. Um, they were first last year. Um, okay, they're a pretty good team. Yeah. Defending world champion from they uh, Thailand. They were playing against a Japanese team, MCT Susano, and they are new to the small size league. They are a bit of a surprise. They're okay. a brand new team this year. Um, when you get a new team coming into the league, you don't necessarily know how well they're going to play. Um, okay. But they showed up and they could play a good game of soccer. So it was a bit of a surprise. Good. So they can play a good game of soccer. Of course, the defending world champion was, uh, well, a bit stronger than them. We have some footage and we're going to try to comment on what we see, but it will go really fast. So maybe we can't follow and then we'll comment afterwards. Here's the game Scuba against MCT Susano. There we have a moving ball. So I believe that was uh, the first goal, but it's difficult to see the camera's position very far. Um, so, uh, Jonathan, can you uh, explain uh, the robots? Are, they're, they're really fast. Is it uh, for them uh, more important to, uh, to find a good position in the field to actually uh, uh, pass the ball uh, to each other, or is it uh, something like uh, we saw in MSL uh, a couple of years that if you have the ball, just try to move as, as fast as you can across the field to find that spot in front of the goal to, to actually score? Um, there's a lot of maneuvering for a good position, certainly. Uh, on the other side of that, the other team is constantly trying to block uh, all views of the goal so that you can't get a shot, because they know that if a robot has a shot, you're, they're going to get a goal because you can shoot that ball at 30 kilometers an hour from the corner, bounce it off a teammate, straight into the goal. It takes no time at all. So is it, has the goalie chance to, to stop a ball? Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Most times. There were a few goals like that in, in the montage that we just saw. It's 
I think the small size league is is maybe the only league where they can play in 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 one time, you know, one contact. They just play the ball to another player, and he touches it once, and it goes straight into the goal. Um, most of the uh, robots have small sensors right on the front of the robot, and it detects when the ball contacts the robot. And so what ends up happening is um, the system sets up a play, it moves the robots into position, and then it shoots the golf ball, and it's all um, almost all autonomous from that point on. And you hopefully get the goal right afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw uh, today. I saw a few of the of the one touch goals. So one robot takes position and he gets the ball and in no time at all one touch and it goes into the goal. I was told that you can have even more, that you can have three straight contacts in a row like tack, tack, tack and then to the goal. Uh, it's rare, it's certainly rare um, okay. and usually only the better teams can do it but um, I've seen at least a, excuse me, a double pass. I oh, uh, see, um, yeah. But uh, they are rare. Yeah. How, how, do we, how do we imagine this computer system, this central computer that is controlling all the players, he is constantly looking for lines or triangles to reach the goal, and once that he can see there's a clear path for this player, will he immediately decide that that player has to get the ball? That's a very difficult question. <laughs> I'm <laughs> most, so sorry. <laughs> most, uh, most teams keep their, their particular methods for driving um, how they choose where the robots need to be and, okay. and what plays they make. Or, yeah. or they kind of keep them a little bit secret. Um, every team has a, has a different way of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But the robots, I was told, are learning during the game. Some of them are. I believe Scubas in particular do have uh, a, a learning algorithm built into the system where they see which strategies worked well against the uh, the teammate they're playing the team they're playing against, and if it's doing poorly, they'll switch to another one. If it's doing well, they might keep going on that one, and, well, and they'll well. learn as they play. Learning algorithms. I feel a Doctor Who scenario <laughs> coming again, and the robots will rise against us. What are your expectations for your team? Um, we lost two games yesterday, but we won two today. Uh, mm -hmm. That places us in the lucky loser round for uh, tomorrow. Okay. Um, I don't think they're super high, but we're going to give it all we got, and mm -hmm. hopefully we'll make it into the tournament. Have you seen a schedule of tomorrow? Do you know what the strong games are? I don't think anybody's seen the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody's seen the schedule. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I understand what you say. So uh, maybe uh, for me, when I get time tomorrow to watch one of the games, uh, where where should I put my attention? Is there something uh, I should look for, for to, uh, forward to when they're playing the game? Because I'm pretty new uh, in that segment. I don't have time to watch any of the games, unfortunately, but... Hmm. Um, I'm not sure which of the teams you want to be watching right now. Um, I'm sorry. Well, it's especially how, how do we watch a small size league. We know how to watch a mid-size league because we know how the software works and, and what, the, what, the, what the normal glitches are and, and bugs are. Mm. How do we use, do we, do we try to, to, to think of the team as a, as a whole a bit more than in a mid-size league when you watch a small size league game? Uh, that's certainly the case. Okay. It's, I believe in the mid-size league every robot is independent and yes. autonomous. Yeah. Um, in this one it's more of a hive collective. So okay. this um, queen bee is, is yes dictating where all these robots going and it's, yeah. it, it's setting up strategies. So you're looking for um, setting up the other team to fall into your honey trap, as it were. Oh, it's even, you set up traps. Oh, some of them are very cunning. <laughs> <laughs> so if I watch closely, I can see patterns uh, that uh, occur several times. Possibly, yes. Ah, okay. Good, so we wish you uh, all the best for your team. There's more uh, qualifying games going on tomorrow, and on Sunday there's only the finals, or also the semi-finals? I believe both the semi-finals and the finals and the are finals. coming Sunday. Sunday. Good, we will cheer for Thunderbots. Uh, they have the nicest shirts of this entire Robogop. They also have the most beautiful girls, but I think that's bad for their concentration. Yeah, and, and they have Jonathan. And they have Jonathan, of course. Yeah. And the robots, the robots play a part too. Good. Apart from the football, the other leagues have been um, have been doing their uh, challenges also today. And uh, we were filming at the Rescue League. So the Rescue League is where they have to locate uh, victims and um, try to get them out of difficult situations. And uh, we have some footage of that, I believe, that we can start now. One of the teams has got a drone, a uh, flying robot that flies over the disaster scene and will then locate the victims from above.
In the best way, the faculties of the arm. This team is called so uh, Socrop Rescue, and they are from Portugal. Here we see their drone. It's uh, taking off a quadcopter with four propellers. It ri it's rising over the disaster scene. And then from there, it sends footage to the robots on the ground, which makes it easier for them to see the situation. I think, uh, yeah, we just talked about uh, the Queen Bee, and I think the drone uh, is acting like uh, that, uh, that, that one camera on top of everything to actually coordinate everything like that Queen Bee we just uh, talked about in, the, in small size. So yes. maybe it's a nice connection uh, between, uh, between these leagues. And he has to be very careful because there are nets over the arena in uh, the rescue league. And I don't think you want to see one of these helicopters hit a net. So normally in the, in the, in the rescue, they only have these, uh, these bots uh, uh, on uh, uh, rupsbanden. Do you know the English word for rupsbanden? Tracks. For tracks? Track tires. Track tires, yes. okay. <laughs> so yes, uh, this are, is... We, uh, are, we are both very happy and slightly nervous that we have the first English-speaking uh, person yeah. at our table to correct our mistakes. <laughs> this is another team. They also use a drone. It's uh, the FKR2 team from Iran. And uh, just like in uh, some of the other leagues, this is, uh, I think, a very big step forward uh, to see drones actually uh, yeah, flying around inside of the arena. And also, I think it's typical for a Robocop that when you see one team introducing something really innovative, that the next year the other teams join. Because uh, is the Rescue League open source too? Do they have to share all the innovations? Yeah, Robocop is open source, so everything, uh, every league is open source. I think that same uh, applies to a small size. I believe the entry requirements to most leagues is to submit a paper describing how you built your robots for these years and what innovations you've done. Could, could people next year just take the software of your small size league and use it on their own robots? They can't take our software, but they can uh, take our description and implement it themselves. Oh, okay, I see. But uh, in other leagues, so. Uh, we talked about, I think, in the first show, that uh, in the mid-size, uh, suddenly there was a new team, nobody heard of it, but the robots looked exactly the same like one of the best teams at that moment. So <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's not uh, uh, impossible to copy a team. And I'm really hoping that all the teams will use drones next year, but I really think uh, it's good. This drone is uh, becoming slightly unstable now. It's still looking for the right position, and of course, Having a drone in a disaster environment is very difficult because there are obstacles everywhere. I think it's harder to break when you're in a movement, when you're in the air. Yeah, and there, there went down. He went down. And the Iranian team uh, takes the drone back. Now, um, at the opening show, the big chairman of Robocop Federation said that one of the Rescue League robots was actually helping in Fukushima. So when they had the Fukushima disaster with the, with the nuclear plant, there was a rescue robot there that came from the Robocop. So that's uh, the first direct results already of uh, this competition. And maybe uh, uh, it did not uh, do what uh, we're trying to do here, but it certainly helped in locating the victims. And I think that's one of the most important things, uh, yes. to, to, to have uh, some robot that can go hours after hours to locating victims. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, we also had a visit of the Queen of Holland here today. Did you see the Queen of Holland, uh, Jonathan? I did see her wandering around. Yeah, she was in the middle of this exciting, uh, this excited crowd with the, with the, uh, f uh, uh, taking uh, photos and uh, everything. <laughs> I think she was mobbed, uh, I didn't get too close, she was mobbed pretty well. The, uh, yes. but, uh, is, is Canada still a part of the, um, do you still fall under the British Queen? Uh, queen Elizabeth is still our queen, yes. Really? Um, well, but we are an independent country. <laughs> well, we, we all have our own kings and queens, all yeah. three of us. Belgium has a king too. So the queen was visiting today. Um, she uh, received a flower. Uh, a robot gave her uh, a flower. And she watched uh, a game, a very nice game, a mid-size league uh, game, uh, Holland against China. And we found uh, this uh, photo already on the internet of somebody who saw a great resemblance between um, the Queen, Queen Maxima, receiving the flower from Amigo, the at-home care robot of the University of uh, Eindhoven, and a nice photograph of a Star Wars movie. I think it's Princess Leia that's uh, in a conversation with R2-D2. There, it's history repeating. And uh, looking at this photo, it reminds me of something my mother uh, once uh, told me. 
uh, we were on a vacation in a hotel and she had to open the door with a card key. And she said, uh, 10 years ago, I was looking at a movie and that was science fiction. I can't believe it happened. <laughs> and well, maybe I have that same moment now when I see uh, yeah. actually a real, uh, uh, the queen take flowers uh, from a robot, which is autonomous. So Yes, a princess and a robot and a queen and a robot all in one picture. Good, the at-home league, um, uh, the league for the service robots, the robots that will have to help us in our homes in the future, hopefully, they had a, a clean-up event. Um, it was, um, well, it was scheduled just when the queen had left. I don't know if she threw away the garbage. That's um, something that I'll have to ask the security team. But so the clean-up event, it's just, um, you have an arena. It's like a, a, a room, it's like a living room. And there's some objects are placed there that the robot has to clean up. Some of them have to end up in the garbage bin. Others have to end up in the dishwasher and uh, the robot has to know what part is what. We took some footage there and we're gonna watch it now. This is the arena. There was a nice crowd of audience at the At Home League 2 today I saw, which, which is nice. Yeah, the crowd of At Home is also growing every year. And that's because uh, the robots uh, are also reaching a level where they can actually uh, perform some uh, tasks that you simply don't expect as a, as a new viewing audience. And even a simple thing as throwing away a can can be, uh, can be astounding. They are independent thinking too, right? Yeah, completely auto autonomous robots. Um, so uh, a challenge normally starts by the robot entering uh, a room. So as soon as it passes through the door, um, it has, to, it has to do everything al alone. And uh, it's clear for the robot what, is, what its challenge is, so it knows that it's going to, to clean up. But uh, in some cases, uh, a command has to be given by some random person. And that means that you have to do a very good speech recognition. Oh, so it's not, it's not the people who built the robot, but it's the referee that gives the command. Yeah, not always. Sometimes it's the referee, but uh, sometimes they just choose someone from an, uh, from an other team. So each team uh, gets uh, selected some one person to uh, give commands to uh, another robot. Here we can see, I think it's the Spanish robot who found a packet of cookies and oh. he has to bring it to uh, the cupboard. There he found a bottle of uh, soft drink and he has to take it with him too. Yeah, Cosero, I think Cosero has a twin. There are always two robots. Uh, you're allowed to bring two robots into the arena. Yeah. So you don't ha have to use one. It's possible to use two. And uh, some uh, teams, they actually have two identical robots uh, working together. Some have one small robot as a sort of a basket to carry objects and stuff. And uh, yeah, other teams choose to only use that one robot. So yeah. even some robots have their own robots? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. That's nice. You are, you are a service robot and you have your own service robot servicing the service robot. Robotception. <laughs> yes, Robotception. absolutely. Good, so the At Home League will uh, continue uh, tomorrow and there will be a final on Sunday. Is the final an open challenge again? Yeah, the final is uh, something, uh, well, the final is one task and one task only. Please show us the best you have. And that's okay. always uh, good to watch. Yeah. Um, so uh, maybe a, a nice quote from one of the, the Dutch team members. I spoke to them today. He said, Oh my God, we are in the finals and we don't have any code for that. <laughs> so I wish them a, a, a very uh, good luck for that. Last year in the finals, there was a team that made the robot bake an egg and bring a glass of orange juice. Yeah, so uh, for that challenge, the X-ray said, oh, well, we're going to make breakfast and uh, they did the best they could. So uh, they tried to uh, uh, bake an egg and uh, uh, the, the hardest thing is, uh, when you open a refrigerator, you have to really gr grip the handle. But as soon as you're going to pour a glass of orange in a, in a, in a um, plastic bottle, you don't have to grip that tight. So it's mm -hmm. so very nice to see that they could uh, do all these, uh, all these things. Yeah. Yes. I hope nobody had to eat that breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I wouldn't have mind uh, to, to eat that. So. Really? Yeah. There was a bit of oil maybe and a bit of iron in there. But, uh, I think I when you ask a robot so, bring me breakfast, he will just show up with a battery probably. You know, I love to watch the at-home league, but there's one thing that annoys me. Um, and it's, well, maybe it's just philosophical, I don't know. But the generation of my father, um, men never had to do anything in, in the house. They didn't have to clean up, they didn't have to make food, because the women did everything. And now there's emancipation, and I'm all pro, you know, I'm, I'm helping and I'm cooking dinner. But when I look this at-home league, I realize that the generation that comes after me, 
the men will never have to do anything at home because the robots will. This means Not for all three of us that in the, in the 100,000 years of mankind, only one generation of men will have ever done homework and it's us. I think you're making a classical mistake right now and a lot of uh, people uh, make this mistake. So uh, we're not uh, building these robots to take over our task, but we are building these robots to help us with our tasks. Yes, so that's it. it's not uh, that uh, we want uh, robots everywhere. No, we just want robots where they can help us the most. Oh, okay. That's are good. You, are you kidding me? The only reason I'm in, in engineering is because I'm exceedingly lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Yes. And yeah, you know, I'm also yeah. still waiting for the robot to bring me a beer, but it never happens. <laughs> I'll get right on that. <laughs> Good, let's move to football again. Um, the mid-size league, um, which has shown uh, on, on this event this year, the mid-size league has shown to have become a very spectacular league. The games are really nice to watch. So what did we see today? Yeah, so uh, yesterday in the show, uh, I lied to all of you because I said that two teams would be uh, uh, f uh, going out. Um, actually, they changed the rules a little uh, this year, and I, I did not know that. But um, um, they changed the groups after after yesterday and gave all the teams a, a new place uh, in one of the groups to give them an extra chance to to, to prove themselves. Um, but that also meant that today two teams from both groups had to uh, had to leave the tournament. And uh, yeah, some some really great games uh, were played today, and I think a lot of. Uh, uh, things happened. Let's just uh, go quickly through uh, tr through both of the groups. Um, group A, consisting of uh, uh, the, the German team Carpe Noctum, the Chinese team Bitak, uh, the Portuguese team Isoporto, uh, the Dutch team Tech United, and which one am I missing? The Iranian team MRL. So um, from that group, I think uh, Tech United, who is uh, world champion at the moment, and MRL, second of the world, were most likely to go through. MRL had a lot, a lot of problems. And uh, they managed to, to score in uh, their third game in the second half. In the last minute, they scored twice, winning that game, guaranteeing them a spot for tomorrow. Or they would have been out. So that was very exciting. And I really thought at that moment that the game was over, but they, they managed to score twice. Will they, able, will they be able to fix it? Because they were considered pretty strong, right, the Iranian team? They're considered pretty strong. They have a lot of problems, but they fixed a lot since yesterday. And today I saw a big improvement. And uh, yeah, when you talk to them, you, you just feel how passionate they are and how hard they're working to, to beat uh, the, the final, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, I think today it became uh, very clear that there's one team uh, exceeding all the other teams and that's uh, the Dutch team Tech United. Um, yeah, they're, they're playing really, really strong and uh, they went first in their group, of course, won all four games and they're the only team that uh, ha has kept their goal clean so far. So all, all the teams, uh, yeah. They did not uh, manage to do that. So for Group A, who went through? Tech United went through, uh, and uh, MRL went through. So which one of the, the three teams uh, that were left, uh, one of them had to get out. And surprisingly, well, maybe not, because I kind of predicted it, but they, 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 they said that they wouldn't manage to get through was the German team Carpe Noctum. And I'm really happy to see them tomorrow, because I really think they, uh, they can uh, perform well tomorrow. So that's for the three themes in Group A. Uh, group B, yeah, yesterday we saw a, a surprising uh, group leader, Nubot, uh, the um, Chinese team. Uh, unfortunately, today uh, they had lots and lots of problems, so they're out. So that's uh, surprising to me. Okay. Um, the team Water and uh, Kambara, Water from China, Kambara from Portugal, both world champions uh, in the past, uh, played very good, both very strong. Kambada, uh, they told me today their robots arrived like uh, one day before they had to go uh, had to come here. So they actually built their first uh, robot right here with parts and started programming them. Well, well. Uh, and they're doing right uh, quite well. So let's see what they uh, can do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, in Group B, Team Water won all their matches, so they're, I think, uh, the one to watch uh, for for tomorrow and maybe even uh, the day after that. Mm -hmm. um, surprisingly, uh, it's true is Hibikino Musashi, the Japanese team. They really don't have that uh, advanced robots because I don't think they have the money to actually build some of the advanced control mechanisms. Mm -hmm. uh, but they still manage to get through, and I really, uh, really like to see what they what they can do with with those uh, lesser robots. I don't know if we can say we call them lesser robots, but yeah. Have you so, been uh, filming anything uh, today? Yeah, well, there were so many good matches that I couldn't decide anything. And uh, then suddenly, um, in the halftime of uh, Water versus um, Kambada, 
the, the Dutch team, Tech United, they went on the field to test something. Maybe we can, uh, we can show that uh, clip now. So uh, they went to, uh, went to test something. So uh, this is, uh, uh, they just arrived in the field. Yeah, this is a little test match. So on the sideline, there's uh, Rob with his laptop. And he's actually now punching in code to, uh, to improve uh, what they have. And uh, on the field, uh, you only see his legs, but uh, that's very. And uh, yeah, well, what they're doing is uh, trying to pass the ball really quickly. And it went wrong like a thousand times, but then this happened. So a uh, short pass, and then very quickly pass back, and then a high kick. And it, yeah, well, I don't think we, uh, we saw any of those goals today. But uh, yeah, I love to see that. And I caught it on camera by accident, but I really had to show this tonight. So that's, that's a new move that's not used in the game <laughs> yet. Uh, uh, no, that's a f we've seen uh, these kinds of free kicks, but never this fast. And I, uh, the, how fast you go, I think uh, Jonathan uh, can concur. The faster you go, the more uh, finesse you need, and the better you have to uh, yeah. to look at the ball, see the ball, know where you're kicking, and uh, you have to be sure that there's an, a team member there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Of course, it's uh, difficult to call this fast when there's a small size league <laughs> guy sitting yeah. next to you. But <laughs> they're a little bit slower, but I think their job's a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah, probably. Good. Um, so, uh, just to uh, wrap up uh, for tomorrow, we have some uh, very nice games. And um, if I uh, look at the teams that are left and the level they're playing today, uh, I, I, I don't think I'm going to do any predictions of who's going uh, through to the, to the top four. Yeah. Okay, but well, it's an open invitation. Uh, everybody that is within driving uh, distance, uh, there's a weekend coming up. We hope you don't have to work and you're very welcome here. Tomorrow will be a big day already. The games will improve because the best teams, um, the best teams will go on and go to quarterfinals, semifinals. And we're all aiming for Sunday. Uh, Sunday should become a big party with uh, the finals of all the leagues. We see a lot of empty seats. We are see, we are located here inside uh, the hall. We see a lot of empty seats at this moment because, well, the audience already went home. We want them filled. So if you have the time and if you are within driving distance, please come and visit us uh, tomorrow or the day after at RoboCup to see a small size league game of the Thunderbuds or the mid size league games where you will be commenting again. Exactly. Did you know that Eindhoven also has an airport? Eindhoven has an airport there. If you so. have a private jet, you can join us too. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much, uh, Jonathan, for uh, joining us here. Greetings to all the girls uh, in your team. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Guy, yeah. for joining me again. And uh, we hope to see you soon, either in real life or again at uh, the talk show. Don't and forget. Thank you uh, very much. <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> now, uh, yeah. now for joining us too here tonight. Don't see you tomorrow. Don't forget something. Uh, just, oh. uh, you forgot to ask Jonathan the question. Yes, very good. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yes, no, no, don't be alarmed. We, we, ask, uh, we ask the same question um, um, to all of our visitors, and that's very simply, um, will a robot team beat the human world champion in football in the year 2015? They try every year in the medium-sized league, and it doesn't usually go so well, but ah, 50 years, well, 40? 37, yeah. 30, oh yeah. God, you're counting, are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Um, <laughs> 37 years is a long time. We'll probably be old and gray by then. Mm. You know what? We just might. With computers evolving at the rate they are, it's maybe a good chance. That's one more for the Yes team. The Yes team is growing. See you tomorrow. Bij binnenkomst van de Koningin hebben we haar een bloemetje overhandigd. En hier hebben we een demo gedaan waarbij we Maxima's gezicht geleerd hebben, een bestelling opgenomen hebben. En Amigo is een drankje voor haar gaan halen. En bij terugkomst is hij haar nog goed te herkennen, gelukkig. Het is heel leuk om te, te weten hoe dat die robots nu uh, nou echt werken en uh, hoe dat ze bijvoorbeeld met elkaar samenwerken. Dus, uh, dat, en, uh, dat hebben we een beetje proberen uit te leggen.